So hi everyone and welcome to today's speaker chat. I'm Bianca Woods, Senior Manager of Programming at the Learning Guild. And we're joined today by Nick Floro. And he's going to be talking about uh, sticky e-learning tools and technology. We're going to reference some stuff from the session recording that was uh, done uh, earlier this year, if I remember correctly. Nick, I think it was February. Yes. And also go in all sorts of new directions. Um, Nick has some awesome new things he's going to share with us. We're going to take your questions in the chat. We've got some questions of our own and it should be a really fun time. So Nick, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Excited to be here and uh, go back and forth. It's fun. So, okay. You showed me something while we were prepping. Some fans. <laughs> it's, it's very <laughs> silly, but I think the audience will enjoy it. Your green screen. Yeah, so the, the backdrop behind me is actually my office, but I'm actually at home in the bedroom right now. So the technology, and I'll show you a picture of this a little bit later on, is a green screen. So what's behind me is actually an Ikea furniture that's probably older than my kids and my stock drawer. But this is a lot more interesting, so I can open and close it. <laughs> that, that I, I just love this. As you're pulling your green screen down, kind of like part way, it, it's yes, really fun. Yeah, halfway, yeah. <laughs> Your half <laughs> <laughs> That's just super creepy. <laughs> so your original talk that we're, we're kind of using as a jumping off point here was all about sticky e-learning tools and technology. And so I gave it a rewatch earlier this week. And there's, there's some things that really stuck out for me that I was hoping we could go into a little bit deeper. So um, one of your early slides had the greatest little unicorn animation. <laughs> Um, for this concept of magic unicorns, the, this idea that, you know, a single new tech can magically solve every single one of your problems, kind of the one tool to rule them all thing. Um, and you were like, no, that's not really a thing. Um, instead, we should look at using our tools in combination to build better experiences for our audience. But I think this, this magic unicorn tool thing, I mean, I, I feel like it's been a around as an idea the entire time I've been in this industry. Why do you think it won't go away? Uh, um, so I, I think sometimes it's not this, this, this group of people, like as instructional designers, yeah. learning the architects and so on, we uh, you know, get trapped or we think that there's this magic tool or magic ideal that will magically solve all our problems. And that's why we put it in there. Um, I actually borrowed that from software development ideals where mm -hmm. they think that we're going to build this thing that's going to solve the world. Um, and I hope so. But uh, <laughs> <Wouldn't it be laughs> nice? uh, growing up uh, when I was about 20 so years ago uh, at one of the Mac worlds, uh, there was an event where they were showing 3D software on a Mac 2. So yeah. This is going back like 30 years and uh, going over, I was really excited and I was like, wow, you guys have this amazing new software and all they had was a sign and they had the computer and everything, but they're like, can I see it? Can you guys show it to me? And they're like, no, no, just imagine this three dimensional thing that would allow you to create your animations. And that got me really excited, but I'm like, it's not real. It's like smoke <laughs> and mirrors. Uh, and I was like, is it going to launch this year? Is it three years away? But I, I like to kind of look at that or think about that whenever we're designing or building or looking at something to figure out, is this really a fit for um, our audience at the time? Yeah, so much of like picking the right tool and approach is that not just what's neat or what the client immediately asks you for, it is really what's right for the audience? What do they need? Exactly. And I, I think... Um, often we forget because we have that deadline for Monday or Wednesday <laughs> and uh, we just have to kind of refresh our brain into what's our process and, you know, will this actually help? And uh, something that we've been talking about for years now is just, and you guys, the guild's done a great job help emphasizing this, but, you know, actually talk to your audience and, you know, figure out what they need and is this helpful and getting that constant feedback loop. Yeah. And I know when you're, especially when you're in a larger organization, sometimes it's hard to get access to that audience too. Like you're very, very far removed. And then if you're, you know, doing client work instead of being internal, that's even harder. And, and you do a lot of, how do you, how do you find out about your audience when you're that far removed from them? It's funny because I, I think, you know, five, six years ago and going back into the past, it, it was that way or um, we still think it, it's a kind of mm. like a myth. And um, you just have to start by asking. So if you're able to, um, you know, communicate with your stakeholders, your teams and, 
you, you know, you might have to keep banging on the door, but they'll open it up. And once they see how it will make it easier for you to create and to build better content solutions, whatever you're working on, it's, it's like magic. And uh, you'll get to that unicorn then, because it's like, wow, you actually listened, you built something. And where I get excited is when we actually get to hear the audience talk and give us that direct feedback. It, um, when you see them smile or yeah. frown, it's yeah, magic again that you can <laughs> yeah, learn from what makes them happy and excited. There is no magic tool, but there are some magic approaches. Yes, yes. So, I mean, this whole presentation was originally all about like, here are some new ideas and new tools to, uh, to find. As I was watching it, I was like, oh, I need to download that. That seems like a thing I need to play with. How do you like find inspiration for new ideas and keep track of all the new tools and technology that's out there? Uh, great question. So I uh, encourage my team at least once a month to just kind of keep their eyes open. So whether they're playing with the little one or taking a walk, uh, hopefully safely, um, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, you know, watching TV or watching a movie. But if you, if you see something, take a picture. If you're on your mobile device and playing around, but think about how or what it's doing. And I think you guys have done a great job in the past with um, one of the earlier events where you had us analyzing games. And that, yes. that's really exciting because we're, we're going through that process of you know, thinking about what do I like, what don't I like, and how do I apply it? So whenever I see something shared on Guild Chat or in the tweets uh, or another speaker talks about, um, I write it down and I, I have a you know, hit list and I'll go through it, try to hit one or two a week and just kind of quickly uh, figure out, is it going to help us or not? And if it is, we'll go a little further and I might ask a teammate to play with it and evaluate how do we fit it into our process? But it can be overwhelming. And I think that the trick is to, you know, focus on one thing and modify your process and, and keep growing. Yeah, I mean, it really is that looking everywhere for inspiration because you might find your next great idea for something related to learning and something that's not remotely learning. Yes, yeah. So um, uh, I share um, a folder on my computer that whenever I'm running around with my phone or my tablet or even on screen, I'll take a grab of whatever interests me and I'll make notes. And then when the right time comes, I'll bring that up or I'll be like, hey guys, here's a really cool interface I saw or here's something really bad. Like, how do we avoid doing this going forward? Um, but it's a great way to just kind of build and everyone's growing that. Yeah. So we have a question. We're going to, going to go back to your green screen because it was really fun. Um, Deb asked, like, what was that cool green screen in the beginning? I mean, is that something you just, um, that stands up like an easel? How, what's the format of it? Because you pulled it. Yes, th this one is the Elgato, E-L-G-A-T-O dot com. So the, the cat. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, they have lights and they have screens. And then the little link we'll share at the end, uh, there's a link to it. Um, oh, cool. But basically, it's it's uh, about, it's kind of like the old projector screens. Oh, it's yeah. It's about six feet uh, long, so it just fits in the car, but um, I can carry it. Like, so the little one will grab it and use it in his class zooms. And so he was in Star Wars world or Harry Potter world, cool. whatever book he's reading, uh, he'll jump back and forth. So I was sharing with Bianca earlier, that's at my actual office. I'm not there, but <laughs> it, it helps um, inspire me or get the juices going because of all the, the things that we are used to doing. So um, I do it to help. A little bit of Zoom normalcy. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> And my IKEA drawer isn't that interesting. <laughs> Look, yeah. we're all used to unusual workplaces at this point. I feel like someone's IKEA drawers is like maybe the least weird thing I have seen in these <laughs> last few months. Very cool. Um, okay, so you have, that's a really great thought process we were just talking about of how do you look for inspiration. So I know in the session you talked about how you use um, content um, aggregation tools like Feedly and Flipboard to kind of keep on top of what's new that's out there. So what blogs and other online content are you following in your Feedly? Um, so I, I tend to go through keywords. Okay. Um, so, so Feedly is free for everyone that doesn't know it. It's just feedly.com. So you can use it on the web, you can use it on your phone or your tablet. And I go there at least once, if not twice a day. And wh what tends to happen during the week is that I get a little crazier with work. So I get up to like a thousand plus items and my weekend goal is to get that down to zero. 
just like oh, wow. email, the email challenge. And, and um, so I, I have like design, education, biz. I look for those keywords and then I'll, um, it also connects to your Twitter chat. So if you're following people in our field that, you know, throw out interesting things, um, then that will also come in. But what's cool is that you can give it thumbs up or down and that helps you to um, curate what is most interesting to you. And then I also try to share what I see that I think is of interest to the, the peeps, <laughs> our community, <laughs> um, to help grow. Um, but what I love is that if I see something cool, we use Slack internally to communicate mm. with our teams. Um, so I will uh, send it to the dev team, send it to the front end team, the design team, whoever it is, and they'll add feedback. And I love that because I might've thought it was really cool. And they'll be like, oh, we've been doing that for two years or that's, that's awesome. Let's <laughs> like, start doing thanks, that. old man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the development team often does that where they're like, uh, yeah, we've been doing that. Don't worry about that. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's a great way for me to keep learning too. So I'm like, oh, I get it. Uh, this is how we do it. So it opens up those doors uh, yeah. to understanding. Um, and if any of you are on Twitter and you're not following Nick right now, I recommend it right now. If I remember correctly, Nick, you're hand, you lucked out with handles. Your handle is at Nick Floro. Yes. Right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Very lucky. <laughs> Um, so I know that you found some new tools as of late. I know we have some people in the chat who are excited about seeing some new tools, some new ideas. You, you want to give us a preview of something cool? Yeah, I'm going to uh, hit share screen and I'm going to share my desktop. And you guys, you all should see this. Um, so what I have, one of my favorite new tools this year is a platform called Miro, M-I-R-O.com. And um, when uh, Bianca gives me the word, we'll actually invite everyone in here. But what, what's amazing about this tool is that since we're all been working from home the last three, four months, um, is that it allows us to have a virtual board of ideas. So often I work in what we call learning architecture, where we're working with a stakeholder to understand the content um, try to figure out different ways that we can create experiences based on those audience interviews and conversations. And then we test ideals. And what's really exciting about Miro is that there are all these great tools and that we can all be collaborating at the same time. So I grabbed, based on um, Bianca's feedback, um, I grabbed the web page from the Twist site. So you can actually just hit um, grab site and you can see there's all these different links. So if I wanna do a Google image search, for example, um, I like rubber ducks. So I'm going to do a search for a rubber duck and I can just click that and I can use this to start to brainstorm or think about. So it's just going to pull that image in from the web and I can use that to help explain why ducks are so important to what we're going to be learning about today. But you could also have it pull in a website. So here we see an example where I have pulled in the twist blog post about this event. And what I love about that is that as a team um, or as we're collaborating or facilitating an event, I can choose the pencil tool and I, this works on my uh, tablet or phone. I can circle whatever's of interest to me. So I can highlight elements and where you're gonna see the magic happen is that when we all get into this, you can all be drawing and collaborating. And the key here is to have a facilitator that can help drive the conversation. So I can grab a sticky note and you'll see I've added a couple, but I'm gonna share this with you guys so that we can all play, but then we can zoom in too. So I can be like, um, you know, this you know, title needs to be edited. So if we're working on a new project where we're talking about tweaks or edits or things, we can use this as a way to give quick feedback. And so we might have three or four stakeholders on a call and we're gathering it and they're able to participate just like a Google doc, but it's much more visual, much more fun. And then they have all kinds of templates. So um, you can see some of the highlights from some of the screens. There's the magic unicorn we were talking about earlier. <laughs> I but love that can, unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> you can bring in graphics, you can bring in visuals. I'm gonna mention demo fest in a little bit, but uh, what's cool is if we're up for it, we can share. But um, what I want to have you guys do if everyone's ready to play is that I'll turn off screen sharing and I can share a link. And what'll happen is I'm gonna pull you all into this area. And I've, there's three or four questions here where you can all just double click on a sticky note and start typing in your thoughts. Um, so maybe we'll do this at the end of the session. So we'll talk about what we learned, what is your favorite yeah. mobile app, but just a way to um, help communicate and share. But it's such a enlightening tool to spark conversations and to, to have fun.
Um, very exciting. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, good, sorry. I've seen some interesting work done with this for um, collecting user information and doing um, user interviews and then having Miro boards be the collection point so that you could have multiple interviews, multiple interviewers, and the whole team can put all their stuff together in a Miro board. Yes. Yeah. One, one of the amazing things, uh, I think this team is up to 300 people. Nice. I was uh, in a feedback loop with them last week, giving them feedback about the platform, which was fun just to hear about what they do too. But there are hundreds of templates and they also have a great academy. So what's cool is that you can sign up for free. Um, you, I think you, you can have up to three, three is always a magic number, <laughs> uh, three boards. And then it's not that expensive. It's about $150 a year per person. Um, but if you're using it once a day, once a week, it's such a empowering tool. Um, you know, to me, I would pay much higher for it because of what it gives us from a capability standpoint. Mm -hmm. But as you Just mentioned, there's, that. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, you can't charge us more, but, um, yeah, uh, <laughs> there's all kinds of templates that you can pull in and you can modify them, but they also have a great academy where you can learn about how different people are using the tool. And I love watching and analyzing how others build their things to just learn and you know think about oh that was a really good example or that was a neat angle that they used or how did they do that um or this is something really bad i would never do that <laughs> but uh sharing with my team then you know what works what doesn't and, and you know from our perspective and how can we apply that and again that whole idea of learning and growing but it's uh definitely something everyone should check out and there's the spelling of the green screen <laughs> oh nice <laughs> uh, um so you've talked a little bit about how you use it for your internal process. Um, in the chat, Holly asked, um, how do you help your clients add this to their, their courses? Is this something that you've used with um, the final end user? Oh, so yeah, it's two ways that you can use it. Uh, so during the development process, you would use it as part of that uh, wireframing, gathering feedback, asking questions to the audience, and just either helping them to visually understand it uh, or just to kind of present the different ideas. Um, from a post event, you might use it in, you know, facilitator led training yeah. where I'm gonna be teaching you all about Miro. Um, so I would use it to help guide us and like, okay, everybody, let's go do some sticky note activity or let's brainstorm about what is working, what is not. Um, what is great is that you can invite people that aren't members and you'll get general uh, names and like anonymous one, anonymous two. During one of the early betas, they were using like animal names. So it was very cool, like red lobster, blue frog. <laughs> and we're like, that's kind of cute, but kind of weird. Um, <laughs> you don't want to uh, be a, a red lobster? I personally do, but some of the people we were, we were testing <laughs> it with were like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're like, why is your name there? And mine's not they're like, we're paying for my account. But <laughs> um, so what, what's cool is that you can invite people that aren't members to participate and then you can turn off access. So you can okay. gather data. And then what's also really amazing is that with every object that you bring in, you can also download or you can save what they call a board. So I have a board here called tools and there's a link back to speaker chat and to some notes, but I can click on those things and it will just open up those links. So here's a you know, list of tools that we're gonna share uh, just for everyone's homework for the next week. So next week. Um, <laughs> Don't call it homework. Uh, yes, call yes, it exciting personal learning. Yes. I don't yes. know. Let's rebrand <laughs> that. Yes. <laughs> uh, having kids, I got to keep drilling it into their brains that they have to do it. No. <laughs> um, but that, that's a, a fun way to share and kind of link and you know, giving you a launch pad to connect to all your different ideas. Yeah. I feel like you're you're almost teasing us with this tools section because it's out so far. I can't really read it, but it looks oh, like sorry. there's some intriguing. <laughs> That's okay. Not a criticism because you're trying yeah. to show us the Miro tool. But within the Miro tool, it looks like there's some neat stuff you might also go into. You want you want to tell us about some of the yeah, things you so, have in this tool section? Um, this first one is called Reflector, which is a, an app that you can uh, get for your Mac or Windows computer. It's eighteen dollars, and it allows you to mirror your phone or your tablet. Um, and you can actually try it out. So you can test it for free for a week or two, and then you know, it's a small investment. But what I love about it is that um, I'm gonna pull over my iPad. I've got an actual iPod here, if you look at the video screen. <laughs> but um, here's my actual um, home space that I'm working in right now um, that you guys can't see, but the green screen is there behind me. So you can kind of see it's about five feet tall. 
and uh, those are my screens and you guys are all here in the center area. But what's really cool is that Reflector allows us to uh, reflect what's ever on our computer. So we were talking about Feedly as an example and um, oops, will this app work? Let's see. Oh, it won't let me do it. Nice. It it's won't not reflect. Like you. <laughs> uh, when it does work, um, it allows us, because we got too many different apps open, I think, um, it will allow you to go in. So let's see if this one works. The other tool we wanted to highlight from the sticky chat was explain everything. And um, this is a really interesting tool because what it allows you to do is quickly explain to a teammate, a peer, or potentially use it in your learning. But um, this app is free to download for three projects, and then you can either delete the project or for $70 a year, um, you get unlimited projects. And this is another amazing tool that works on an iPhone, an iPad, an Android device. And um, you can do all kinds of priceless things that I would add a zero onto the cost, but I won't say that too loud. But um, in this first phase, the idea is that you have your tools along the left-hand side and you can hit record. So whatever we say will be recorded. So it's kind of like a real-time drawing board. And so if I hit the record button, the audio will start to record. I'm gonna grab the pencil tool. And I'm just gonna use the default yellow, but I can be like, hello. I can draw a happy face. My pen did dad, happy face. Um, and what's cool is that if I hit stop and rewind, or if I scrub through, you can actually see how that was drawn. And what's great is that you can actually save this out as a MP4. I'm gonna hit pause because the audio is going. Um, and what it does is it actually allows you to save that out. So if you are an illustrator or a sketcher, or if you want to start to highlight, you can bring in a web page, one of your courses, and you can start to annotate on a screen. So if I go down into that lower right corner, I can bring up a second screen. So here's that picture I was talking about, and I can hit record. And I can start to highlight, like, here's my main monitor. Um, here's my backup computer. Here's my chair. It's comfy. It's probably older than me. Um, here's an iPad, my coffee. Um, but what's cool is that as you animate and move, it's recording all your movements. So if we want to zoom in and talk about, this is another amazing Elgato device. It's called a Stream Deck. And what's cool is that you can download software onto your computer and it allows you to set up hotkeys so I can turn off the light or trigger different software. And I'm gonna hit stop rewinding. Um, but what's cool is that as I scrub backwards here, you can actually see all the motion. And what um, this product, product allows you to do, explain everything, is that I can save this motion, this animation, these sketches as a MP4 video file and then I can quickly share with my team or a stakeholder, hey, here's the tool that we're looking at. Here's some feedback that we want to review. Here's some other information. And so it allows me to quickly grab something rather than having to plan. I'm able to do it in real time, if that makes sense. And it, it just exports as an MP4. So you can actually edit audio. You can re-record things. So it, uh, in the old days, we used to do this in Adobe After Effects, which would take a lot more time and planning. But this is real time because I can just start zooming in and rotating things and highlighting things. There's my fan to keep me cool. Um, <laughs> oh, someone bought himself a Dyson. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> it's refurbished. <laughs> Being a tech geek, um, I do play with lots of toys. And so like up here, you can see the old iPad. Um, I use that as my clock so I can see what's happening, what time it is, and, um, you know, and so on. But what, what's great about this product is that it allows you to use one of their templates and um, uh, you can see here's an example of an event I went to earlier this year, but what's cool is that I was able to, let me just hit play. Um, I was highlighting some of the different areas and you can see that you can actually bring in video and you can highlight or draw on top of that video. Um, so what was really cool about this event is that they had six stages simultaneously and everyone had on headsets as they were walking around or sitting down. And that just really interested me that I couldn't hear without a headset on, but I was able to walk and have a conversation and I wasn't bothering anyone. So I just took a picture, a little video to help share with my team, like this is a really cool thing. I'd love to learn about how they did it, what was involved and what was the feedback from the users just to see if it's something that we might wanna do again in the future. Um, yeah, the annotating on video seems like a nifty thing to steal from sports because you'll sometimes see that in like replays and exactly. it has a great opportunity for learning as well. 
Yes, yeah. So in you know, here's another example where you might be sketching out an idea and we can't all be in the meeting or meet physically. So I might sketch out a concept and as I'm talking about it is that we're gonna have the product name up in the corner, we're gonna have a little area where there's a video, and then I can, you know, save that as a little video and share that with a stakeholder or peer to explain this is our concept and this is how it'll work. And it, it just helps save time because I don't have to jump in a meeting with everybody that couldn't make it to that meeting. Um, or I can communicate a concept that they can then think about and we can, you know, debate or uh, launch from there, like brainstorm and think about what's possible. So I'm doing it with no hands. This is pre-recording. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you haven't uh, developed psychic powers? Yes, yes. That's our next, yeah. powers? <laughs> <laughs> On the dream list. No. <laughs> I'm guessing you're using an Apple Pencil with this? Yes, yes. I, um, one of my favorite things that I use every day is the iPad. And what I love about it is that it doesn't get in my way. It lets me do what I need to do so quickly. So often uh, I'm in Zooms with my team and Zoom has a great annotation tool. So I can use my Apple Pencil to just draw on their screen and I will connect with my computer so I can use video and you know, see what they're doing. But then on the iPad, I will start sketching. And what's really amazing is if you use your pencil and you grab the corner and drag up, um, that takes a screen grab. And um, what's cool about this is that often if I'm on my Mac, I'll use the built-in Mac screen grab, and then it brings up the same tools on your tablet. So I can then start to annotate, hey, um, I really need to have a photo here. Um, let's fix the spelling here. Um, we can highlight, I really like this, but what does a yellow box mean? Um, and what's cool is that I can then share that with you know, through Slack or through email or whatever tool we're using today. Um, but it, it doesn't, it just helps me to communicate faster without, um, you know, I have to go through three steps. And that's something we try to do for our audiences as well. And I think a good practice to kind of follow. Does that make sense? Oops, I'm just gonna make sure. Um, Bianca, do I still have you? I might have lost audio. Oh, um, there sorry. we go. Problem on my end. You okay. said <laughs> were on my. I wanted to make no. sure I didn't launch an extra tool, and I'm like, oh, I missed something. I was talking, and then you you weren't responding, and I was just like, I bet he can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, everyone. Uh, so what I was saying is this: uh, you know how sometimes you're in a meeting and you're you're trying to explain something, and you just like draw on the whiteboard, or you draw on a piece of paper, and even if it's not a great drawing, it still is so much quicker than trying to use words. This feels like great for that. Exactly. I think that's the key uh, message that I try to instill in my team, but you know, also just a great practice because in the old days, we'd write a two page document about <laughs> how this activity would work. And it's just so much easier today with all our tools to you know, visually communicate and get down into the nitty gritty. Yeah. And you don't have to be a great artist to visually communicate. Yeah, and I think you can see from my sketch. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> that's not what I was saying. Said, no, no. I was just saying that was a like, proof to the thing that, um, uh, you know, drawing with the kids definitely helped me, but I, I think it's just being comfortable. And, uh, you yeah, know, the more you do it, the better you get at storytelling, and that's invaluable. So, like, yeah. as you do it more and more, it's just easier to communicate. So I'm going to loop back to Miro just briefly for a moment here because we got a question um, from Luke asking, is Miro usable one time, kind of one time for one group in Zoom? Does everybody then need an account? So I. Great question. So um, with Miro, I'm going to share a link to everybody here and that will let you into this board to look at it for notes and to add notes. But um, it's, it's called, um, you know, it's sharing with everybody that aren't, that do not have accounts. So that's totally cool. The only thing that doesn't happen is that it assigns names. So like you won't know that Nick added a note. It'll be like anonymous this user was your, one. Your red lobster account. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't like cost with, anything. Um, which Google is, Sheets and Google Docs. Exactly. So if if you're working with your core team and I want to know that um, Molly said X and Rich said Y, then you would pay for an account for them. But if, it, yeah. if you're just gathering general data, then you're totally cool. Yeah. So I'm gonna go back to one of my questions and audience, feel free to pop anything else in the chat. We're gonna get through all your questions that you have. Um, 
you've shown us a couple of tools that have template functions. Um, also, in the recorded session, you were talking about um, Adobe Spark, which is um, a tool that I'm pretty fond of, and how it can be so fast because it has these templates to choose from. But um, I know we've all probably seen some really awful templates, like the old uh, PowerPoint templates. They're nicer now, but like 10 years ago, ouch. Um, and if you're not careful, things made with templates can end up all looking too much the same. So how have you found to find a good balance between leveraging templates for speed, but making sure that things still feel fresh over multiple projects? That's a great question. So I, I think one of the lessons um, that I've learned the hard way um, is you always want to keep it simple. Like it's much mm -hmm. easier to communicate and to illustrate and to, to, to teach. So um, if you think about when desktop publishing started, some of you may not be old enough to remember that, but um, when the first like Mac Wright came out, you had like a dozen fonts. And if you think of like the font, like Hobo and so on, like certain fonts you shouldn't use, but everyone kind of mixed all the fonts together. And I, I think that's a great example of how to apply back to templates. Just because it's there doesn't mean we have to use it. And just because you can do 30 different transitions, you don't have to use all 30. Um, so I, I, the way that I think about it is that the, the goal is to kind of, you know, push out information that, you know, people start to recognize. So if you did a little promo for speaker chat with some music or your message that you're trying to deliver through Adobe Spark, um, the idea was that they recognize, oh, this is a 30 second clip. It's going to help me do something. It's a new tool that we're sharing. Uh, but then you get to the meat or the main content where you're educating, sharing, showing, and then you're going to cut back to that end promo. So you shouldn't, you know, use a hundred different transitions. And what I think about also is having two boys, um, the Star Wars movies, when you watch those again, four, five, and six, um, you see all those weird, you know, uh, transitions were, which were brand new at the time. Like people just didn't do it. The whites. Um, yes, yes. And it, it's cool as like, um, you know, honoring them. So like in the new movies, you see something very similar and we're like, that's just kind of weird today because it's just wasting time. <laughs> so it's like, can't, can't you just cut or dissolve or go to the next idea? So I, I think it's that balance that we, um, struggle, strive to yeah. ma maintain and manage. So what, you're, what I'm hearing you say, I can't believe someone is saying this, is not to use star wipes for yes. everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old star wipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it's definitely, I think, when people get a new tool and they're so excited to use it, sometimes they'll try all the bits and pieces with it. And I like your idea of just, just keep it simple. Exactly, exactly. And I'm trying to, um, there we go. Um, lost my screen. Um, oh, no. I got it back. <laughs> Which like, screen? Too, too you have windows. eight million screens. I know, I know. Now. It's like, where'd it go? Um, yeah, so I, I think that's the key message. So like when, when we're, um, you know, thinking about how we design an experience, just because you can add a button or add a link and you think that makes it interactive, like hopefully no one's doing that anymore. Um, or in the old days, like e-learning was considered like click, 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 go through the slides yeah. and then take the assessment. And our job is to help, you know, break that myth or model yeah. and, you know, shock everyone into this is what we're doing today. Oh um, my goodness. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't have to just click next until I've numbed my brain into oblivion. Yes. Yes. And but just not even to say a next button is necessarily evil. It's just, should you use it for everything? No. Yes, when I see it now, I'm like, hmm, is that a good next button or a bad next button? Yeah. Because like, <laughs> it got brainwashed. But, so you um, talk, yeah, you talked a little bit just briefly there about assessing. Mm -hmm. And you, you had some interesting thoughts in the recording about assessing about uh, one way to make content way more sticky is to think about assessment and how you can make the assessment process more sticky. Um, and one of the things that was in that was detailed feedback. Um, so not just saying, oh, well, you got this right, or you got this wrong, but adding some more information to that. And that can be a huge way to make things more sticky. But I mean, there's always, I think we're just going to keep talking about balance anytime we talk about these things, because you don't want it to ha be an info dump either. So how do you find the right amount of detail to give and feedback? Yeah, I, I, what we strive to do is um, like through testing, through mm -hmm. prototyping, is to look at what the audience actually responds to in a good way and what do they feel is extra or not needed or not required. And so 
as we're watching a video or walking through a simulation or scenario, you might give some quick feedback on their reactions or their choices. And the ideal is to help them, you know, learn and, you know, point out what they're doing well or not well. Um, but it, it, it is that give and take. So um, what's nice about like tools like XAPI and when you start to build these bigger type uh, applications is that you can start to use that data to drive your concepts and to see, well, no one actually clicked on the second reference document. Do we even need it? Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, that's the nice thing about things like XAPI and iterative, uh, iterative design is you learn more about how people use the thing you made and then you make tweaks appropriately. Yes, exactly. And I think I have um, an example of a simulation. Um, this is using Adobe XD, but um, this was uh, using MindMap, which is a, um, an application you can download for Macs or iPads and there's hundreds of these. But um, this one's really easy. And this actually we do in Miro today, which is cool. another reason why you can adapt that tool rather than having three tools. Um, but uh, this shows the logic of a user coming into a simulation and they're gonna watch a welcome screen and then they have three choices and then the wrong choice is gonna take them to a feedback. If they choose one of the other two, they start to drill down. But we had to create this map to help the designers and the developers understand all the interconnections. And what's interesting is that when you start to look at feedback, um, the lesson that you're gonna to come to is that it's cool to have someone fail. And I think you guys have done a great um, messaging in the, the Learning Guild community, yeah. uh, you know, helping us understand this is that, you know, to fail is to learn. And um, so if, if they fail in three minutes and 30 minutes, whatever it is, you let them play, you keep playing and they keep learning. But if you just have a static set of screens, there's not too much to do. So by intermixing that feedback, um, you might be like, hey, the first time you went through this or the first day that you did this, we noticed that you spent 15 minutes and you did it wrong all three times. So you might shoot them an email or a um, you know, follow-up notification to say that, hey, it's time to practice this or in this lesson that you did, here's three ways that you can grow or expand. So rather than forcing them to do it all in one sitting, it's how can we create those connections to get them back and um, you know, make them as those little micro nodes or components we call yeah. them today. Yeah. Well, and that could be some interesting feedback for you as the designer. If you see more than one person, like multiple people, a majority of people looping around continually failing in something like a simulation, that tells you something about the simulation isn't working because there should be a certain amount of failure. Learning from failure is great, but if everyone keeps getting stuck, Exactly. And I think this is one of the, the promised land, you know, goals yeah. for us for XAPI is to look at, um, you know, out of the three choices, no one, you know, like less than 1% has clicked on A ever, that choice. So is that choice really bad or too obvious? And, you know, yeah. do we need to write better content or, you know, change it up or to randomize it, but it'll uh, reveal what you can do better as mm -hmm. a designer or developer to build better interactions. Yeah. Also, I don't know, sometimes with simulations, um, the fail path is more entertaining than the got, I got it right path, which is, I mean, it's nice to have your content be sticky, but if the stickiness is about, let's see what happens for funsies with the fail path instead of let's figure out how I should actually do that. That's maybe stickiness in the wrong direction. Yeah, and I think uh, you're an avid gamer. <laughs> yeah. and, and, that, and that's special. Nick, because... Nick knows where my thoughts about this are coming from. They're, they're from doing not what I'm supposed to in video games. And I think that's a great way, um, you know, to show like your special power that you like to learn through playing around or experimentation and seeing what happens when I do something totally, in, you know, crazy and not the right path. You know, does the game fail? Does it show me the right way? And um, th that's exciting to me as well. Like, there's so much to learn by looking at those patterns and, you know, seeing, um, you know, thinking about it's not just about A, B, C, D. It's about what happens when I hit A and yeah. random factor and how that goes. Um, and it, your, everyone's job here in the community is to figure out how can I build into my scenario, my simulation, my goal, whatever I'm teaching, how can I start to you know, throw in these ingredients to open those doors? Because you can't do it when your deadline's Monday or next Friday. It's like, I have three months or for next year or for the end of this year, how do we start to build in these pieces 
and you know build upon them so that we have another thing that we can use then to solve um, for our audience. So we've got a, a great question from Danny uh, in the chat. So he asked or said, even though there's no magic unicorn tool from your recorded session, it seems like there's many mobile-based tools for creating bite-sized learning um, versus building courses using older authoring tools. And yeah, I, I've definitely seen you use a lot of mobile-based uh, tools. What are you seeing the trends in that? And do, are these things replacing older authoring tools? Are you using them in tandem? Um, that's a yeah, great question. And it's a complicated I think that, question, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So um, part of it is it's fun. Like um, yeah. the mobile device is newer. It's um, we're not using that old archaic thing, the mouse. <laughs> um, and you know, we get to use our fingers and touch and zoom and do all of these things. So. I think a lot of the limitations that we got, um, you know, framed within are broken. And by using a, uh, a tool to build a part, so like explain everything might be a video to help us learn how to use this tool in a fun and exciting way where I, you know, I can do that for $80. I have that product for a year. And if I use it once, it pays for itself. In the old days, uh, if you asked me to build that for you, it would be like a $20,000 project using Adobe After Effects, Premiere, yeah. doing shooting. And that's insane because most of us don't have those kind of budgets. So um, we look to mobile tools and those smaller elements um, to help us fill in those gaps uh, and not just be template driven. So um, that, yeah, it, there's kind of a balance there we have to keep pushing yeah. ourselves to work out. I mean, I know with my own personal experience when I use mobile uh, tools to create micro learning object, a short form object. Mm -hmm. um, usually the tool does one or two things, but it does them really, really well. So narrow, but focused, whereas older authoring tools brought, are a lot broader. Um, so it's nice to have both to use together. Yes, yes. Yeah, and it's like, uh, you have to realize that, again, that my deadline's next Friday. I yeah. don't have time to learn how to use Miro or whatever you might be thinking about. So like, start to play like um, next Monday, I'm going to spend two hours playing with this, thinking about how it works in my process and I'm going to use it on my next project. Don't do it during the deadline. <laughs> Please. It's like sad, sad faces then. Yeah. <laughs> That's when you'll discover it does something about it doesn't work. And then your entire timeline is blown up. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I know we, you keep jumping to that. Um, it looks like it's a Dropbox list of, um, of tools. And mm -hmm. uh, Rhonda had asked in the chat, are, are, they, are we going to be getting access to that list of tools? Yes, yes. So um, there's a link. It's just, um, you guys are all part of the team. Steelworks.team slash speaker chat. So I'm going to find the right window if I can. So yes, Nick is going to share yeah. everything with us. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awful yeah, if he so. was just showing this and he was like, I'm not sharing it with you later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just teasing uh, you with it. Yeah, here we go. It's hidden up there. So there's the there link. There you go. Um, and yeah, if anybody has feedback or ideals, I'd love to hear it. Uh, those are tools that we've been showing at some of the different guild events that we've done over the last two years. And there's the, the latest list. But um, if you do one a week for the next, you know, till the end, till DevLearn, um, you'll have lots to share too, which is awesome. <laughs> Yay! So I, I'm going to jump back to your tools list because you had one of those little um, screens that had a bunch of physical tools. It, it had your green screen on it, looked like some, some video stuff. Setting up a studio. Tell us more about what you've got here. Now I'm just curious. Yeah, th so this is a lot of fun. So um, uh, one of the cool products that we discovered in the last year is called OBS Studio, which is obsproject.com. Um, so we'll share that in the chat. And um, basically what it allows you to do is on your Mac or Windows computer, you're able to um, capture yourself using your built-in camera, but then also put a visual. So this was um, when I was speaking last year at DevLearn, uh, we were showing a little commercial that you guys were doing fun little things. Um, but what's amazing about this product is it's free, that's amazing, um, and there's no strings attached, and it works on your Mac or Windows computer, but you're able to use a green screen and you know, project yourself into that environment, and so you can, uh, you know, depending on the size of your house or your room that you're working inside of, you can have your whole body or just your head up, but this is inspired by what we see with kids today um, on the different uh, streams that they do, playing the video games, um, and I was like, like hey, that, 
yes, exactly. Like, yeah. this is cool. Um, and we've seen uh, um, Melissa Milloway do this with uh, Adobe XD. Um, and, you know, she's in the corner, but you're focused on her screen. Um, so it's uh, a great way of, you know, doing that. And what's really cool is that you can have multiple inputs. So if you have your built-in camera and I'm using a Logitech external camera, you can switch between the two angles. So you might have one from the side and one from the front. You might have one behind you showing you working on your computer, but just to add interest and to keep people uh, engaged. And then you have your screen itself, but it's like magic. And um, it's definitely something I'd recommend. The interface is a little bit scary at first, but um, once <laughs> you get It's open source, that, right? Yes, yes. Which means a certain aesthetic. Yes, um, but once you get past that like 15 minute mark, you're like, I get it. Um, and it makes it really easy for you to start to build this. So what's also really cool is that when you record your video, it's already compressed. So you don't, you can upload it right away to your project or to share with your team. Uh, and they're able to use it, um, without having to recompress it and you can, you know, play with those settings, but, um, that's really cool. And then, um, these objects over here, the Elgato, uh, if you go to elgato.com, um, they have lights that work uh, attached to your desk or on your desk. So I'm going to turn my light off for a second. You can see I kind of get dark. I've got a window next to me. But what's cool about them is that I can adjust the tone and the tint um, you know, through software. So I'm able to optimize it for trying to make me look better, which is hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to do that because I'm a dad. Um, <laughs> um, and so that's also really cool. And then the last one is Stream Deck, which you can actually use for free with your phone or tablet. Um, but they also have this device. So I'm going to try to lift it up. And um, this device is amazing. And this runs like 100 to $200. But you can set up little icons to help trigger actions. So um, the one for my light is right here. And if you're looking at your video feed, you'll see that I'll do a screen grab. But um, what, what's cool is that um, if you have a newer MacBook or you use one of those two screen type devices, it allows you to add these codes so that instead of remembering shift Apple three is screen grab, I can just hit a key and it allows me to trigger that. So that's one of the ways you're able to, you know, flip between multiple things and not have to remember everything because our brains are only so big. <laughs> <laughs> what we have finite amount of, of, processing power in our head. How disappointing of our bodies. Just this year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next year's model, much better. Yes, yes. Um, uh, and, and, and Elgato is not paying you to say any of this. No, these are just cool <laughs> things that I've uh, found. I get nothing out of it. Um, but uh, like anything that I find that I use, I like to share because it saved me time. So in the old days, the, uh, my spouse won't like that I you know paint the wall green. Um, our walls are blue here in that bedroom, but uh, you can, if you have permission from your spouse to paint the wall green, that's another way if you can't get a green screen. Um, I will say with the current conditions that we're in, uh, these items are getting a uh, 40 to 80% yeah. over, overage. Uh, so just watch for the sale. Like the prices are here, what you should be paying. So just, you know, once a week, once a month, you'll see it drop and that's when you want to buy it. Don't buy it when everyone's paying $300 because... Yeah. You can buy two then. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness for online um, services that allow you to track prices over time. You can that'll help you know. Oh, this is overpriced this week. Yes, yes. Um, so, and what's cool about Stream Deck is that you can also just download the software, mm -hmm. and um, that will work with your phone, whether it's iOS or Android. And you can do the same thing. It doesn't have the button feel, but if you want to experiment and see that, we'll actually use this. Um, so I used it enough that I was like, I'm going to buy the device because um, it helped. That sounds like a really nice way of taking it for a bit of a test drive because 150 bucks, if it's really a thing you're going to use all the time, it is a good price. If it's a thing you're like, maybe I'll use it, it's a lot of money for that risk. Exactly, exactly. So uh, yeah, I always look for the trial, the test run, ask the community, like, does anyone have this? And are they yeah. using it still? <laughs> So Luke asks, um, your, your thoughts about TechSmith's Camtasia? Oh, amazing product. Uh, highly recommend it. Um, th they have a Mac and Windows version, and I'm not sure if the latest version is in parallel, but usually one does a little bit different. Um, so um, what I like about these things I've been talking about is that they're quick, simple, and easy. And like Camtasia is an amazing platform if you're doing higher level simulations or interactions. 
Um, another one that's great is um, on the Mac called ScreenFlow, which again, lets you grab something and save it. But um, what's great about the TechSmith products, like I have Snagit as well as Camtasia, is that you can try them or test drive them for 30 mm -hmm. days. And if you, you are using it, um, you buy it. If you're not, you don't, you, know, you uninstall it. But, Great um, for trial versions. Yes, both both tools I highly recommend, and I think you know if you're if you're building uh, tutorials and uh, simulation scenarios, uh, they both have a, a place in our toolbox. Yeah, Snagit is one that I have found is unusually powerful for how cheap it is. I think people don't always realize you can do um, video recordings with it, and it's it's great. Yeah, I, I think a lot of that comes too from uh, TechSmith has some higher end products, which we don't often hear about because they're used more in usability studies and uh, testing. Um, but if you have or you peek into that world, um, you can see that. And I think those uh, features trickle down to their you know base tools um, that we use every day, which is For awesome. Us people with no money. Yes, <laughs> our limitations. <laughs> Thank you, TechSmith. Um, Yes. <laughs> Thank you, people paying for the expensive stuff so it can trickle down to us. Yeah, w w you know, like just tying back to OBS Studio, like this is something that we would have had to pay tens of thousands of dollars for yeah. several years ago, and now it's free, and uh, it's just amazing. Yeah. So we're near the tail end, and I know you wanted to give people a chance to play in Miro um, all together right now. So yes. now it's probably a really good time if we want to give people a little activity. Yes, so I'm gonna give everyone editing uh, power. So I'm gonna ask that you all behave. I'm not responsible. <laughs> it's okay if Nick. you don't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do that one more time. So I'm gonna copy the link. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna stop screen sharing. And uh, when you come in, you're gonna see this big area and you're gonna see the magic duck. I'll put the duck over the area that we wanna focus on. Follow and, the uh, duck. Yes, I'm gonna record what you guys are doing. Actually, uh, just so you can see it afterwards because it's fun to see what people do. But what's gonna happen is if on your keyboard, you hit the space bar, your hand, your cursor is gonna change into a hand and that lets you reposition. Mm. In the lower right corner, you have a map that shows you your whole world. If you have a trackpad that lets you pinch and zoom or a scroll wheel, um, you'll be able to zoom in or out. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is zoom into this first question and all you do is double click on a text note and you start typing. What did you learn today? Or what do you want to share today? And you can have fun. You can draw something. Uh, just be aware that if someone clicks on this sticky, it's theirs. <laughs> so you go to the next one. Um, so Seems one of the fair. strategies, yeah. Um, and you can edit anything. So I'm going to go ahead and share that so we can see chaos. I'm going to stop sharing on my screen, which is going to be fun. And um, Miro board. So in the chat, there's a link. And um, I'm going to hit record on my screen just so we can see what happens. So in the yeah. upper right hand corner, the share button is gonna to start to fill in. So you'll see my face and then you'll see others. And so we got eight people in there, nine people in there currently. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab you all and say, come to me. Um, and what's cool is that there is a cursor in the upper right hand corner where you can hide everyone's cursor and see where they're at. So that's kind of fun too. And I'm gonna say, everyone come to me. So now you're all gonna to come to me and um, you'll see that first question. So the idea is that as the facilitator's talking and we'd all be off mic and we'd be communicating and we'd be like, okay, what did you guys learn today? And you can hit the tools on the left to add a new sticky note. If you option copy, you can add more. So I can add some more down here at the bottom uh, if we have a bigger group. If you shift drag, you can grab multiple things. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm adding some more stickies, but you can also go to question two, three, and four if you want to start backwards, just so we have a map. Uh, interesting. So um, I've been sharing that this is very peaceful for me just to sit back and watch all the people moving their cursors around. I'm like, wow, you guys are really busy. You guys keep going and I'm going to relax. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty nifty looking just watching this live. Um, and this is something that um, We'll just take a minute here, let people play with. But if you want to come back to this afterwards, I know there's quite a few different questions here. Come back later, add things in, and this is something we can all revisit later on today, over the weekend, and maybe build it out a bit more. Yeah, I'll, I'll add a question area. And uh, if anybody throws in questions uh, that we didn't get to in chat, I'm happy to keep an eye on it and uh, add notes in there. So. If we come back next week at Guild Chat, we'll share the link again and y'all can peek. 
<laughs> or if you want to show it to a peer, um, uh, it's a great way to share. And for those of you who don't know what Guild Chat is, now I'm going to do a commercial. <laughs> it's our, it's the, the Learning Guild's live Twitter chat that we have at this exact same time. It's usually every week. We've been um, doing it every other week just so we could make space for a speaker chat. And uh, yeah, we love having people there. And we always discuss nifty new things. And uh, if there's ever, ever a topic you want to have a big group discussion on, uh, let us know. And we will make it happen. But as as we're kind of winding down, there was one question I definitely wanted to ask you today as we were near the tail end. So one of the things that really stuck out for me from your presentation was this really cool technology called Sim Sensei. And it was using AI to analyze people's body language and provide feedback um, as they were learning how interview skills, which is, and I mean, you even said like, this is, you know, at the forefront of what's happening in what technology can do in our field. It's not something you can go get for free online. Not yet. <laughs> Give us some time. Based on what you're seeing, what are some kind of bleeding edge technologies that are out right now or are about to come forward that you think might start trickling our way in the next five to 10 years? What's amazing is that these tools like the SimSay is that it's not that far off. Like they're yeah. designing and developing in um, code to kind of build these ideals or concepts. And what we're seeing is that the major technology companies like IBM, Apple, Microsoft, Google, um, Amazon has this great set of services called AWS, mm -hmm. um, their web services. And what we're seeing in software development is a trend where we can start to grab these pieces. So like someone mentioned earlier, the idea that I'm using a dozen different mobile apps, is that practical? Um, so the idea is that, yeah, <laughs> it can be. Um, what's cool is that we can pull in different web services, kind of like XAPI's ideal, is that we're using multiple technologies to build a you know, interface to a user. So mm -hmm. in the SimSay, the idea is that, um, uh, people with autism or someone that's presenting, um, they can start to see uh, or get analysis about their eye contact, their facial expressions, uh, their uh, emotional or hand usage, and as, as well as uh, analyzing pattern. And if I have to code that from scratch, we're talking about maybe years of development, but by using these APIs, we're getting the uh, building blocks. And I can say, watch my eyes. Um, so I don't have to create that. And then I can analyze that and say, uh, my eyes looked away a hundred times. And so we're, what we're adding as learning experts is the, what does that mean when I look away? Like mm -hmm. you guys need to focus and practice. Um, so I think in the next two, three years, um, we'll have um, so many, you know, these tools that we can access and we can start to experiment. And I think what we have to do as part of this community is think about you know, keep our eyes open and, you know, as participating in Guild Chat and, you know, all the different conferences that you guys offer and the online events, it's so empowering to be able to, you know, keep abreast of what's out there and, you know, allowing yourself time to test, play and experiment so that you can start to build the pieces together and not just rely on that um, star effect that we mentioned earlier. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah, and Holly mentioned something really cool in the chat. And Nick, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Cognitive 3D, it's analytics for um, AR, VR, and mixed realities. Something you've ever heard of? I've not. And I'm opening up the link right now. Definitely, because I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to spend some time with this later. Thank you, Holly. Thank you for sharing. Um, it's so funny. I think it was yesterday in uh, Learn Chat, uh, or it was on the online, the um, learning experience online yeah, event you guys had. Design, yeah. In chat, there were two tools that were shared, and I'm like, "Well, what's this?" Um, and <laughs> one was about, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Let me check this out." But um, it, it's so cool because there's, um, like, I, I get labeled as the guy with all the tools, and I'm like, mm -hmm. "There's only a fraction." Um, <laughs> the guy uh, with a multitude of the tools. How's yes, that? Yeah, yeah, just some, some. Um, but uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm learning every day, so I'm, um, it's so cool. Like, as, as you guys share them, like, please tweet it and write a blog post and you know, explain how you used it. And it's how we kind of feed off each other. The beauty well, of the guilt. Yeah. The, the beauty of the community. And I, I love that like you and so many others in our community and people in the chat are so great about sharing things. And that's, I think what I love about our world. But with that, sadly, I'm gonna need to draw this to a close. 
thank you so much, Nick, for being here today. All the really cool things you shared. Loved the Miro demo. That was neat to get to all do together. Uh, thank you to all the participants that are here today. And thank you for my behind the scenes help from David Kelly, who is our event producer for the day. Um, for those of you that are interested, we are recording this session and it's going to be up on the Learning Guild's YouTube channel early next week. Um, this is the last, sadly, of this first series of speaker chats. However, this was an experiment. We wanted to run a few, see how people liked it. Uh, let us know if you'd like it to us to bring it back because uh, we like it. We just want to make sure everyone else is keen on it too. And the, the chat's like, yes, please, Bianca, bring it back. Um, but thanks again. Everyone have a fantastic Friday and we'll see you in the future at Guild Chat, maybe more speaker chats, other stuff we're doing. Thanks everybody. Bye. Hi everyone.